G'day, my name's Russ Weekly from Max Design. I'm here today to talk to you about the CSS3 REM unit. Let's take a closer look. First off, let's talk about the font size dilemma. For many years, there have been debates about which unit of measure should be used to determine the size of text on web pages. Common options include pixels, M's, percents, and more recently, the REM unit. We're going to take a quick look at some of the older options before talking about REMs. So first off, font sizing with pixel units. Pixels are one of the absolute length units. So here's how we'd use pixels to define font size. As you can see, we have the body, the H1 and the H2, and they're given 16px, 32px, and 24px, respectively. While this method is easy to implement and consistent across devices, it does have some potential issues. Internet Explorer 5 through to 8 don't allow users to easily increase or decrease the size of the text. Now this can present some usability and some accessibility issues. Luckily, more recent versions of Internet Explorer include zooming, which resolves these issues. The second method is font sizing uses M's. M's are one of the font relative length units. Elements specified using M units are sized relative to the font size of the parent element. For example, if the body element has a font size of 16px and an H1 element has a font size of 2m, then the actual font size of the H1 will be 16px times 2 equals 32px. We can define m-based font sizes using things like this. Body, font size 1m, H1, font size 2m, H2, font size 1.5m. Just like pixels, using M units also has some potential issues. So let's look at an example. If you were to specify 0.75 on an LI element, and if you look down below, that's what we've got, LI, font size 0.75EM. This could cause compounding if there are nested LI elements. So this is an example. We have a bunch of list items, all LIs, and then we have a nested list inside so we have LIs within LIs. So in this example, the parent LI is reduced in size, and then the nested LI is reduced even further. So we have the first one of 16px times 0.75 gives us our first LIs of 12px. But then if we have nested LIs, they will be 12px times 0.75, and they will be 9px in size. Next up, let's talk about percentage units. Now, percentage values aren't a length value at all. However, they can be used to define font size, and they work in a very similar way to the M unit. And we can define them using examples like this. Body, font size 100%. H1, font size 200%. H2, font size 150%. Now, like M units, percentage units can also cause compounding. So how can this compounding issue be resolved? Well, first of all, if you're writing font sizes for things like P elements and LI elements, then you're in for a world of potential pain. It's much better to style the body element to define your base font size, and then you let the elements such as the P element and the LI element take their sizes from the body element. However, there may be times when you cannot control the situations, and in these cases, the REM unit may be the solution. So what are REMs? Well, the REM unit is officially defined as equal to the computed value of the font size on the root element. A root element is an element that has no parent elements. In HTML documents, the root element is the HTML element. So here's a quick diagram of a document tree, and you'll see that every other element in the document has a parent except for the HTML element, the root element. So let's now look at how you use font sizing with REM units. REMs, like the M unit, are one of the font relative length units. The main difference between a REM unit and the M unit is this lack of compounding. Compounding doesn't occur with REM units because the element's font size is based on the root element, not any parent element. So in the example we used before, where we have a nested LI element, the font sizing issue would not occur if the LI had been defined using REMs. 
And so in the example below you see Li font dash size 0.75 rem. REMs are supported by most modern browsers. However, they're not supported by IE 6, 7 and 8. So if the REM unit isn't supported by IE 6 to 8, is it safe to use these units on real-world sites? Well, this is only something you can decide. But there is a fallback option if you're keen to give them a try. One way to solve the problem is to specify pixels first and then REMs. The great thing about this is that only devices that support the REM unit will apply the second declaration. So here we have an H1 and it's first set to font size 32px and then font size 2 REM. So modern browsers that support the REMs will apply the second rule or the second declaration whereas older browsers like IE 6 to 8 will apply the first declaration. Another question is, is there a polyfill available? Well, of course, there's probably a polyfill for everything under the sun. So the REM unit polyfill will test any browser for REM support and then patch it up if needed. Now, a link to this polyfill, as well as a bunch of other resources, will be provided along with this video. So there we have it, a quick overview of the REM unit. But what about you? Are you using the REM unit right now? Is it something you'd like to try? Well, why don't you add your thoughts into the comments below? Thanks for your time.